them uh, maybe 70 years after the objectivists appeared first on the American scene. I am the sole survivor, which is a uh, an ambiguous position. I don't know whether I should <laughs> be glad or sad. It's impossible, really, to define. Uh, objectivism. Uh, Zhukovsky said that uh, always put uh, quote marks on, around the word objectivist, implying by that that he had a special meaning attached to that word. Now, I had never at that point met Zhukovsky the other objectivist poets uh, lived in New York, and uh, they knew uh, uh, Zagovsky. Uh, later, when I did meet him, I worked in New York for a number of years in the 1930s, we became very, very good friends. Although we, the two of us really never talked poetry together, when we met, uh, we talked about women. Yeah, we were both unmarried, both young. Here's the only poem in which uh, Sikovsky let his hair down and uh, wrote an American idiom. This is uh, called Catullus. Seven. It's actually a translation, but an American idiom. Not quite a translation, but some kind of adaptation. Miserable Catullus, stop being foolish and admit it's over. The sun shone on you those days when your girls, when your girl had you, when you gave it to her like nobody else ever will. Everywhere together then, always as it, then as always at it, and you liked it, and she can't say she didn't. Yes, those days glowed. Now she doesn't want it. Why should you washed out want to? Don't trail her. Don't eat yourself up alive. Show some spunk. Stand up and take it. Zukovsky could never be described as an objectivist, although he coined the term. Uh, he was he was a follower of Pound. Let's talk about Oppen. George and I were both members of the Communist Party. We were radical. Image of the engine. Likely as not, a ruined head gasket spitting at every power stroke, if not a crankshaft, beating, bearing, knocking at the roots of the thing like a pile driver, a machine involved with itself, a concentrated hot lump of a machine geared in the loose mechanics of the world with the valves jumping and the heavy frenzy of the pistons. When the thing stops, it stopped with the last slow cough in the manifold, the flywheel blundering against compression, stopping, finally stopped, compression leaking from the idle cylinders will one imagine, then because he can imagine,
that squeeze from the cooling steel, there hovers in that moment, wraith-like and like a plume of steam, an aftermath, a still and quiet angel of knowledge and of comprehension. Laureen Nidecker. Now, Laureen Zukowski and I were exactly the same age. She wrote, all born 1903. She lived, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 miles uh, north of Madison in a, uh, in a little cottage on a river, on a river bank, actually. It was almost sitting next to the water. And the house was so small that I declare that if four people were in there, they would have to walk sideways. <laughs> it was a tiny shack, really, <laughs> but with a big barn. <laughs> in exchange for haiku, how white the gulls in gray weather Soon, April, the little yellows. A new, new sort, clean smelling house. Sweet cedar pink, flesh tint. I love you. Leaning like the house in this old part of town leaves him grieving. Why do I hurt you, oh my love? Your ear's cold. Here, drink. What cause have you to run my wreathed rose words off, you weed, you pea blossom weed in a folk field? <laughs> There's a starkness and a uh, tightness to the to the land or to what to the physical what she sees always uh, that uh, characterizes her work uh, and it, in that sense you can say that she was the most objectivist of us all. Uh, you know, although we respected each other's work, uh, we didn't necessarily like everything about each other's work. With the exception of Resnikov, everybody liked Resnikov. It's impossible not to like Resnikov. I visited Charles in his apartment in New York. He was totally a New Yorker. He used to walk the streets of New York uh, composing these little visual poems of his as he went along. And here's a somewhat longer poem. His Kaddish. Uh, Kaddish is a ritual in the synagogue that's recited by the mourners. Uh, and this piece I, I have difficulty reading because it's so moving. Uh, sometimes my voice breaks uh, when I do it. Uh, and I must say that one of the things that's rare in English and American poetry is poetry that really moves you so profoundly that you feel like weeping. Uh, and this one does. It's called Kaddish. In her last sickness, my mother took my hand in hers tightly. For the first time, I knew how callous the hand it was and how soft was mine. 
Day after day, you vomit the green sap of your life. And wiping your lips with a paper napkin, smile at me. And I smile back. But sometimes, as I talk calmly to others, I find that I have sighed irrelevantly. I pay my visit, and when the little we have to say is said, go about my business and pleasures. But you were lying there many weeks abed. The sun comes out, the clouds are gone, the sky is blue, the stars arise, the moon shines, and the sun shines anew for me. But you are dying. wiping the tears from your eyes secretly that I may go about my business and pleasures while the sun shines and the stars rise. The wind that had been blowing yesterday has fallen. Now it is cold. The sun is shining behind the grove of trees, bare of every leaf. The tree is no longer brown as in autumn, but grayish, dead wood until the spring. And in the withered grass, the brown oak leaves are lying, gray with frost. Quote, I was so sick, but now I think I'm better. Your voice, strangely deep, trembles. Your skin is ashen. You seem a mother of us both, long dead. I think I, I differ from the, from the other objectivists in one respect. Reznikov, for example, had one style. I mean, you immediately knew a Resnikov poem, uh, partly from the subject matter. Similarly, Oppen and uh, Zukovsky. I'm a satirist, I'm an ironist. Uh, I have many different things uh, in my poetry, which, is not, which was not true of the, of the others. Now, I don't know whether that's not necessarily a, a virtue, but that's, that I differed from them in that respect. Down to earth. Ah, let us be honest. There are the poor, the virtuous, the artists weeping at injustice, and there are the realists who secretly admire the rich and cultivate rapacity, who are always well-bred and decently non-committal like the upper classes, but implacable in their self-interest. The boys down at the local bar, drinking to the companionship of men, had their own idea about this, but waited for their senior sage, Mr. Dooley, to expound it. After a decent interval and a boiler maker, Mr. Dooley cleared his throat and began, quote, the American nation in the Sixth Ward is a fine people. The men's ears perked up and they started to chuckle, waiting for the punchline. Mr. Dooley continued, they love the eagle on the back of a dollar. How are you? Why do you ask? 
not floating like a sea turtle in Chelonian bliss, I can tell you. And you? Can't say. Too busy. We're looking for the right axis. And you? What are you feeling? The state of the world. Flaky. A ship passing in the night, calling idealists aboard. We're quarantined. We can't land. God sat on his throne and shat. <laughs>